Hey everybody, welcome back to the 30 day EKG challenge. We're on day number 17 and we have a really fun EKG concept here. Wolf Parkinson, White Syndrome, Pre-Excitation, all the, all the great names. And we're going to talk about how you can identify this on EKG and what it means. So um, we're going to build on this in the next few lectures on some other rhythms that Wolf Parkinson White can actually um, proceed or put someone at risk of developing. So um, first thing I'm going to do when I look at this EKG is I just scan through and I notice that I've got a regular rhythm. You can see QRS complexes are occurring quite regularly. And they're occurring at a normal rate as well. Maybe my rate is, if I find a QRS that lands on a solid line, maybe like here, I've got 300, 150, 100, this would be 75, so it's in between 75 and 100, so we'll call it 85 beats per minute or so. I notice that there are P waves in front of my QRS complexes, so this rhythm seems to be driven by some type of atrial activity. But my QRS is wide. So I do look at my QRS complex and I see that I've got a wide QRS. My QRS complex is greater than 120 milliseconds. And so before we really dive into the rest of this EKG, let's talk a little bit about what is happening in Wolf Parkinson White. So Wolf Parkinson White, it's named after these three physicians, but really it's a it's a disease that um, is caused by pre-excitation. And let's talk about that. So normally, we have signals that are produced by my sinus node, right, that fire off, produce a P wave. And that P wave, the only way for that P wave to get through to the ventricles is via the AV node. And the AV node, we know, usually delays this signal by 120 to 200 milliseconds, right? That's our AV node delaying that signal. And the reason why the AV node captures and delays that signal and is the only path to do so is there's this actual skeleton of connective tissue that surrounds all of the atrial and ventricular tissue and it funnels all of the signals through so that just the AV node is what is sending signals down to the ventricles. And so that's our cardiac skeleton. Cardiac skeleton. It's connective tissue that cannot conduct any of those signals, right? It just blocks it and funnels it to the AV node. And so we know that this is what happens in normal rhythms. So you get this nice normal P wave, and then you have a pause and you have your QRS complex, right? And the PR interval here is that AV node pausing the signal. So what happens in pre-excitation? In pre-excitation, what you can actually get is an accessory pathway. So you have a defect in the cardiac skeleton. So this is a defect in the cardiac skeleton. I'm going to draw it right there. This is called an accessory pathway. So accessory pathway. And this accessory pathway allows for signals to communicate between the atria and the ventricles regardless of the cardiac skeleton. And something that's interesting about an accessory pathway is it does not behave like the AV node. Remember we said that the AV node delays signal by 120 to 200 milliseconds. The accessory pathway does not do that. So what actually happens is when signal arises from the SA node and depolarizes through the atria, that signal gets captured by the AV node and delayed, and that delay we know takes 120 to 200 milliseconds, but in the meantime, some of those signals can actually slip through this accessory pathway in what we would call pre-excite, or cause pre-excitation of the ventricles. And so you can actually get early depolarization of the ventricles. And while that's happening, you get that rest of that signal a little bit later coming from the AV node. And so there's a few concepts that we need to think that are going to occur. One, we have this early pre-excitation that is going to produce early, early 
ventricular signals or early signals within the QRS complex. What's also going to happen is those early signals that it's going to produce are slurred. Because guess what? When these signals are coming through from this accessory pathway, they're not conducting via rapidly conducting Hispurkinji fibers. They're actually conducting from cell to cell, gap junction to gap junction, very slowly. So what you're going to notice is you're going to have your sinus P wave. Here's your sinus P wave. And then you're going to get, instead of that nice flat PR segment, you're going to have slurred initiation of that QRS complex, right? Notice normally our QRS complexes are sharp. Like I drew here, it's a sharp QRS complex. But notice this is a nice slurred upstroke of the QRS. It could also be downstroke, but in this case, it's an upstroke. And then once we get to that point, now our signals are starting to come down from the AV node. And we're going to get the rest of the QRS is going to be through those rapidly conducting fibers. And so the rest of the QRS will be kind of that sharp QRS. And that slurred upstroke is called the delta wave. The delta wave. So what do we get in Wolf Parkinson White? We're going to get, we're going to have one, a sinus rhythm. We're going to have a delta wave representing ventricular pre-excitation. And what's that going to cause? That's going to cause widening of the QRS. But at the expense, at the expense of the PR interval. This is a really important concept. Because remember, the PR interval is representing AV delay by 120 to 200 milliseconds. But we're actually getting forces that are slipping around that AV delay. So my PR interval is, look how much shorter my PR interval is because of that delta wave. So we're going to get widening of the QRS at the expense of the PR interval. Now let's take a look at this EKG now. So notice we've got these P waves before my QRS complex. And those P waves, if I look at where they're coming from, you can see that they are upright in lead one. You can see those P waves are barely showing in lead one, and they're upright in ABF. So these are, in fact, sinus P waves. And when I look at the PR intervals, because remember, after I evaluate my sinus P waves, I need to evaluate my PR interval or my AV node, I notice that the PR interval is really quite short. Normal PR intervals are 120 to 200 milliseconds, but in this case, my PR interval is less than 120 milliseconds. So that is a short PR. So I have a short PR. I have widening of the QRS that is causing that short PR. That tells me that there must be forces that are able to pre-excite the ventricles, bypassing the AV node. There's a defect in the cardiac skeleton, and we call that defect an accessory pathway. So that's Wolf Parkinson White, and I hope that helps. Um, and we're going to talk about in later videos all of the consequences of Wolf Parkinson White. So if you have any questions, throw them down to the comments, and if not, um, see you tomorrow. Have a great day.